Coming in hot. Oh, went too far. What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. Wouldn't it be cool if there was just a few simple things that we could do to literally make our body burn more body fat when that's what we're trying to do? Well today, as we get into our third video in the series about intermittent fasting, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna break down my top five tips for how to get the absolute best results out of intermittent fasting when we're trying to use intermittent fasting for weight loss and fat loss. These are things that I use myself and have used to get the results that I've gotten. These are things that I teach my clients and today I'm gonna to teach them to you. And as always, for the absolute best health, fitness, and nutrition information, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you can be notified every time we release a new video. Now, without further ado, let's get into the cheat codes if you will for how to get the absolute best results out of intermittent fasting for weight loss and fat loss. Here we go. Number one on the list is fasted exercise. Now why would we do fasted exercise? That sounds like hell to many of you probably. Well here's the deal, when you wake up in the morning and you haven't had any food to eat for hours since you had dinner or whenever you stopped eating the day before, you are waking up in this perfectly fasted state, right? You haven't had any fuel coming in, your body's burned through most of the fuel that it has stored away from your previous meals, and guess what? It's burning body fat to a high degree, right? Our dial for fat burn is cranked all the way to 10. What better time than to go out and burn more intentional calories than when we're in this state where our gas tank is empty, so to speak, of other fuels and we have to burn the fat off of our body. And that's the idea here. Basically, you wanna wake up in that fasted state and get out and get some exercise and start burning some calories. Now, it doesn't so much matter exactly what you do. The main idea here is that you just wanna get out and burn calories. There's a lot of great options for this. One of my favorite is just simply getting up and going for a walk, whether it's outside, whether it's on a treadmill. Walking is one of the best fat burning exercises that there is. In fact, all low intensity cardio type exercises are great for burning fat because they're not intense enough on the body to make you have to burn sugar, which is a much faster burning fuel to keep up with the demands of that exercise. They're slow enough in intensity that your body can keep up with the energy demands of that exercise by burning fat. So walking is great, or any other kind of low intensity cardio is a great thing to do first thing in the morning after you wake up or early in the morning before you break your fasting window and you follow into your feeding window. So any low intensity cardio is going to be great to do in the morning before you finish your your fasting window and you move into your feeding window in that fasted state, you're gonna burn more fat that way. Now what about strength training? Can we do strength training during our fast as well to get more out of our fast? Absolutely, I strength train in my fast all the time. In fact, 90% of my workouts are probably during my fast. The only thing you're gonna really notice is that you're probably not going to set any new personal records or PRs you know, on your lifts when you're in that fasted state versus being in a fed state, especially early on when you're just starting to fast. You know, When I first started fasting, when I would work out and do strength training when I was fasted, I felt weaker, but the workout was still good. Now that my body is super used to fasting and I do it basically every day and I have done it for six days a week, I would say for the last several years, my body is used to it. And I find that I can lift just as heavy during my fasted workouts as I do during my workouts that I do during my feeding window. So strength training is good to go. You're not gonna break any PRs, especially in the beginning, but you'll get used to it and you'll find that they're also a very effective way to burn extra calories when you're intermittent fasting. So number one, fasted exercise, that's the ticket. Number two, you only want to have carbs at one end of your feeding window, not both. So imagine this, you wake up, fasted, let's say you're skipping breakfast and you're fasting until lunch, right? You have lunch. Let's say you have a serving of carbohydrate at lunch and then at dinner at the end of your feeding window, you also have a serving of carbohydrate. Well, here's the thing. Our goal with fasting is to incentivize our body to burn as much body fat as possible, not carbohydrate. So if you only have carbohydrates at one end of your feeding window, so let's say you only had carbohydrates at dinner, but not necessarily at lunch. Well, 
when you finish dinner, you're fasting through the night and then you wake up the next morning and you're skipping breakfast and you haven't had any fuel. And you, you fast all the way up till lunch. And let's say at lunch you just have uh, some protein, some vegetables, some non-starchy vegetables, and maybe a healthy fat like peanut butter or some nuts or some almonds, but you don't have any carbohydrate. Well, essentially what's happening here is you're going for almost a 24 hour period throughout the day where you're not taking in any carbohydrates, right? And when you're not taking in any carbohydrates, your body is all the more focused on burning fat for fuel, whether it's the fats you're bringing in, but also it slides back into burning your own fat for fuel in between meals faster than it would if you were to have a carb at all of your meals. Same thing, if you skip the carb at dinner, but you have a carb at lunch, well, again, you're going from lunch all the way through until lunch the next day before you have a serving of carbohydrate. All that time that you're going without carbohydrates coming in is keeping your body focused and primed and optimized for burning fat rather than carbohydrates instead of if you have carbohydrates for lunch and then you have carbohydrates for a snack between lunch and dinner and then you have carbohydrates for dinner. You're, every time you have that serving of carbohydrate, you're kind of distracting your body and making it less optimized for burning fat. Those are two different processes and it takes time for your body to switch between burning one to burning the other and then back again. So if you only have carbohydrates at the beginning or at the end of your feeding window, but not both, you're keeping your body primed for burning fat more hours during the day and it's not having to go back and forth, back and forth and, and, and be inefficient in between those transitions between burning carbs for fuel and fat for fuel, okay? So that's number two. Number three is going to be making sure that you're still getting all of the nutrients that you need on a daily basis while you're fasting. The beautiful thing about fasting for weight loss is that it's an awesome way to eliminate calories from your day. It's a great way to slide into a calorie deficit that allows you to lose body fat and to lose weight. But one of the downsides to fasting is that you're eating fewer meals throughout the day, fewer meals and fewer snacks. So your eating frequency is not as often. And as a result, a lot of the time, you're getting less volume, but you're also getting less variety in your diet. And when you get less variety and less volume in your diet, chances are you're taking in less of the nutrients that your body needs to do all the things that it has to do, right? That includes making you, you know, energetic, making you feel rested, making you feel hydrated, doing all of the thousands upon thousands of chemical reactions that happen have to happen in your body every second of the day. Uh, it includes having the nutrients necessary to actually burn fat and to carry out that process in an efficient way. So if when we start fasting, we're taking in less food and we're getting less variety and we're potentially getting in less nutrients, what we need to do is make sure that we're taking some kind of a high quality multivitamin and maybe a high quality fish oil supplement as well. That would be a really good pair. Two things that I would recommend that pretty much anybody who's fasting should be on. The multivitamin is gonna make sure that you're just covering the full spectrum of all the necessary nutrients that your body needs, vitamin D, B, vitamins, magnesium, all that stuff, your body needs those nutrients. And if you're not getting as much variety in your diet, you're probably not getting as much in of certain vitamins and minerals that you need. Same thing with omega-3 fatty acids. I don't want to dive into a bunch of science here and go like way off in the weeds, but the typical American diet includes a much higher ratio of certain kinds of fatty acids to others. And we don't typically get enough of our omega-3s and omega-3s are super important for lowering inflammation in our body. And that could be really important for a lot of reasons, but most of all, our mental health and our mental state seem to be really impacted when we don't have enough of those omega-3s. So I highly recommend jump on a quality multivitamin and a quality fish oil supplement so that you make sure that you're covering those bases and you're not falling prey and losing out on some of the results that you want to get from your intermittent fasting just because your body doesn't have all the nutrients that it needs to carry out the process of fat burning and to keep you feeling great during the process, okay? If you want a recommendation for a good quality multivitamin, I will put links down beneath in the description for the ones that I use from Thorn. So that's number three. Make sure that you are using a high quality version of a multivitamin and a fish oil supplement to make sure that your nutritional bases are covered, all right? Real quick before we get into the last two, I wanna know, have you guys, if you've been following along in this video series, or maybe if you haven't, have you tried intermittent fasting yet for yourself? And if you have, what has your experience been 
been like? Has it gone really well? Has it been really poor? Have, have you struggled with it? Have you found that it's really awesome for your lifestyle and you think it's going really well? Are you getting good results? Let me know in the comments below, especially if you're having any challenges, because if you're struggling with anything or if you're having any challenges, that might give me some ideas for some new videos to help pull you guys out of those challenges and help you find success with intermittent fasting. So let's go ahead and get into the last two items on this list. Number four is to be flexible. Don't be too rigid with yourself and with your fasting regimen when you're just starting out. In fact, just don't do it ever, right? Fasting is not meant to be super rigid. If you're too rigid with fasting, meaning you, you have to start your feeding window right at noon and you have to end your feeding window right at eight every single day, otherwise your head explodes. That's not a healthy mindset, okay? Same thing with if you feel like you've got to fast for 16 hours every single day, seven days a week, 365 five days a year, you're just going to stress yourself out. So you want to be flexible. You don't want intermittent fasting to be something that starts to become a super big mental and emotional stressor that you obsess over all the time. So have your feeding window that works well for you. For me, it's from 8 p.m. at night through until 12 p.m. the next day. That's my fasting window. And then from 12 p.m. noon through to 8 p.m. is my feeding window. That's what works best for me. But I'm not super rigid with it. If I'm super busy one day and I can't eat until 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., then so be it. I'm not gonna obsess over it and I'm not gonna get super shaken up because I messed that up. Same thing, if I have to have a later dinner one day, maybe, maybe I got home from work late and I'm not gonna be able to eat until nine or, or even 10 o'clock, don't be obsessive over that. And same thing, if, if it's the weekend and your family asks you to go out to breakfast and you're used to skipping breakfast, it's okay to say, you know what, today I don't have to fast I'm going to go and have breakfast with my family. Don't be the stick in the mud or don't go out to breakfast and not enjoy yourself and your time with your family because you're trying to fit inside this super rigid plan for intermittent fasting. If you do that, if you're too rigid with it, you're going to hate it and it's not going to be something that you enjoy and it's not going to be something that is going to benefit you in the long run. You need to have fun with it. Relax, have fun with it, be flexible and just roll with it. Do the best you can. And that brings me to number five on this list, which is let's also try to experiment and change it up a little bit, right? You don't always have to skip breakfast and your feeding window doesn't always have to be eight, you know, noon to 8 p.m. It's okay to every once in a while change it up and experiment with different types of fasting and experiment with moving your feeding window around intentionally. You know, maybe most of the time you fast and you skip breakfast, but maybe you should experiment every once in a while with saying, you know what, I'll have breakfast today and I'll have lunch today, but then I'm going to end my feeding window around lunch and I'm going to try and see what it's like for me to skip dinner. I have experimented with all of these different things in my life and I personally found that I just don't do very well skipping dinner. I do better when I skip breakfast and I have lunch and then a snack and then I have dinner. For me, I find that I can get to sleep better and I do better with that type of a plan. But I've had clients who experimented and they found out they're exactly the opposite. They feel like when they wake up in the morning, they just are at their best if they can get up and they can have a meal or a snack right as soon as they wake up. And then later on, they finish lunch and they start their fasting window after lunch. And for them, their biggest struggle was always that nighttime snacking and nighttime meal getting a little out of control. So for them, skipping dinner is amazing for them. It's like they don't even have to worry about trying to avoid the candy jar or, you know, eat the right portions at dinner. And for them, skipping dinner is just the best. And they never would have figured that out if they didn't experiment and say, okay, I know I've done this and this is okay, but I'm gonna try this and see if I like this. And maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but be open and willing to experiment with this thing called intermittent fasting and keep watching these videos and learning more and more about it because in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna start breaking down other types of fasting and other ways to use fasting. Right here in the first three videos, we've talked about how to use 16-8 intermittent fasting, where you're fasting for 16 hours roughly and you're eating for eight hours roughly. But here in the coming videos, I'm gonna start talking about other ways and other modes of fasting. Full day fasting, alternate day fasting, um, you know, long extended fasts of 30 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, and how those might fit into a lifestyle how often you should do them, why you would even want to 
attempt such a thing because in the beginning I thought, wow, 72 hours, a 72 hour fast. That sounds crazy. Who would want to do that? But then I tried it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually pretty cool. And I feel amazing. Now I don't do it every week, but I do it every once in a while. And so be willing to learn and continue to learn and be willing to experiment. And you may just find that you're going to build up this toolbox of different ways of fasting that work in different situations in your life and that you can use for different reasons, right? So that's it for today, guys. That's my five tips for how to get the absolute most out of fasting when you first start out, right? Fasted exercise is number one. Number two, don't eat carbohydrates right at the front and at the end of your feeding window. Do them at one end or the other so that you have this nice long period of the day where there's no carbohydrate coming in at all, almost a 24 hour period. So you really have to burn body fat. Make sure you're getting your nutritional bases covered with a multivitamin and some fish oil. Don't be too rigid is number four. Be flexible with your fasting schedule. Don't drive yourself or the people around you nuts by being a, you know, a, a fasting freak about it, okay? Be flexible. And number five is keep learning, keep experimenting, and be patient as your body gets used to the changes that it's going through and gets really good at fasting. So then you can really just enjoy the results for the rest of your life. All right, guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell button and if you haven't yet, get the free Getting Started with Intermittent Fasting guide that is available for download via the link in the description. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video in the series. Bye-bye.